Okay, in this video, we're going to go over how to find the orthocenter of a triangle. So it makes sense to go ahead and define what an orthocenter is. And an orthocenter basically is where the altitudes of a triangle intersect, which again leads to probably another question. What is an altitude? Not only are we going to cover what is an altitude in this particular video, but we're also going to cover what is a perpendicular. We're going to review the slope formula and we're going to review the point slope formula because we're going to find this orthocenter uh, using algebra. Okay? So let's get to it. Where the altitudes of a triangle intersect. Now, what are what is an altitude? An altitude basically is a line that is drawn from the vertex to the op to a perpendicular with the opposite side. So let me just go ahead and see if I can make this look like a 90 degree angle. Because remember perpendiculars are 90 degrees. So here is a line segment that is drawn from the vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. Now if we did that again with the other two vertices, and let's see what we got here. So here is my point. Let's try to draw this as much as possible. There we go. This is what looks like it's a perpendicular. And then finally, we're going to do it again over here. And you're going to see, if I did this correctly, yeah, it looks pretty good. Perpendicular again. That all three of the altitudes, once you draw them from, again, perpendicular line from the vertex, to the opposite side, they're all going to intersect at one point. And again, that point is called the ortho center. Okay, so we've gone over what is an altitude and what is a perpendicular. And again, an altitude is a line segment. Let me just see if I can just fit this in here. A line segment drawn. From that's on there from a vertex as a perpendicular. I'm going to use the symbol for perpendicular upside down T to the opposite side. Okay, so again, that is the definition of an altitude. And remember, perpendiculars form 90 degree angles, which is symbolized by that little point there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the equation is for two of these lines, and then we're going to solve them simultaneously to see what they are. So let, let's, let's come up with our plan, okay? So here's our plan. Our plan is we're first going to find the slope between two points, so let's do that first find slope between two vertices then we're going to take the find the perpendicular slope once we figure out what the slope is find the perpendicular slope then we're going to use the point slope formula to find a line that is the perpendicular to the opposite side. Okay, so that's is our, this is our plan. Find the slope between two vertices, like for example here and here. Find the perpendicular to that, so we get the slope that goes in the opposite, opposite direction. And then finally we're going to find what the point slope for is using that slope plus the opposite vertex. Okay, so let's give this a run. First thing, slope between two vertices. Let's choose these two. We're going to choose negative 2, 5, and we're going to choose negative 1, 4. Okay, let's just move that up there a little bit. So let's find that slope. Remember the slope formula is m slope is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Let's fill in our numbers. 5 minus 4. 
doesn't really make any difference which one's the y2 and the y1, as long as you remain consistent. So this one minus this one, therefore x is going to be negative 2 minus a negative 1. Negative 2 minus negative 1. That's going to give me up here positive 1. Let's add the opposite down here. That's going to give me a negative 1. Negative 2 plus 1 gives me negative 1, which means that my slope is a negative 1. Okay? Which means from here to here, I'm just going down over 1, or down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. Now, what is the negative slope, right, of this? And remember, the way you find that is you take the, and I'm going to write this as the perpendicular slope. That's what this means. So I'm going to take the negative reciprocal. I don't know if you remember that from your algebra class. But the negative reciprocal of this would be like a negative, negative 1 over 1. Because I made this a reciprocal. I flipped this up and down. Then I made it negative. So a negative negative gives me a positive 1 over 1, or just a positive 1. Okay? So now that I've got my slope, this slope right here, because it's perpendicular to this, and I've got a point on that line, 0, 6. I'm going to use the point-slope formula to come up with the equation of that line. So here we go. Remember, the point-slope formula is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So my slope, we said, was 1. Put that in there. My point that I have here is... 0, 6, so my x is 0. Over here I've got y minus 6. So let's solve this. y minus 6 is equal to distribute here is just 1x. 1 times 0 is just 0, so I'm going to leave that alone. And then I'm going to add 6 to both sides. I get y is equal to x plus 6. Okay? So, here is my equation for this line. Now, let's find the equation of another line. Let's use, how about this one right here? Okay? So, I'm going to need to find the slope. I'm sorry. I need to find the slope between these two vertices. All right. So let's just go over here. Actually, let's make it over this side here. So negative 2, 5, and 0, 6. Okay. And let's find the slope there. We'll just find these. We'll go through these points again. m is equal to 6 minus 5, 0 minus a negative 2, that gives me 1 over a positive 2. Okay, so that's my slope. Now to find the negative reciprocal of that. It means I negative perpendicular. Or that means negative reciprocal. Flip this up. Make it negative. Or a negative 2 slope. Okay. Now. I found this slope here, and I'm going to have to go to the opposite vertex because that is a point that's going to be on that line. So it's negative 1 and 4. So I'm going to go y minus 4 is equal to negative 2 times x minus a negative 1. Okay, let's start keeping track of all this. I get y minus 4 is equal to negative 2 times x is negative 2x. That's plus 1. Negative 2 times plus 1 is negative 2. Let's add 4 to both sides. And I get y is equal to negative 2x plus 4 makes that a uh, plus 2, right? Because I'm adding 4 
to both sides. Okay, now I've got basically the equation for this line, right? And I've got the equation for this line. So I'm going to see where they intersect. And the way you do that is you set them equal to one another because that gives you a common point that works in both of these equations. That should have been our step four up of our plan here. So let me just put that in there and then find the intersection that in there. Find the intersection of the perpendicular lines. All right, now we're going to do that. Let's put these two guys together. So that and that. Let's put them right here. And I'm going to say, I'm going to do a substitution. Since y is equal to this, but y is also equal to this, that means that this is equal to that. So I'm going to say negative 2x plus 2 should be equal to x plus 6. Let's solve for the x. Add, three, add 2x to both sides. That gives me 3x over here. Let's subtract 6 from this side and this side. That's going to give me a negative 4. That then the divide. That means that x is going to be equal to a negative 4 thirds. What do I do with that? It means that my x value right here is negative 4 over 3. And that makes sense, right? Because it's going to be between negative 1 and negative 2 on my x. It looks like it's just about a third of the way over. So that's good. How do I find my y? I go back up to my equation, and I can use this one or this one, doesn't make any difference, and I'm going to substitute it in. Okay, let's put it into here. So I'm going to say y is equal to negative 4 over 3. Whenever you substitute something, put it in parentheses, it's just a little bit easier, plus 6. Add my two fractions together. Remember that 6 is really just, what, 18 thirds? So I'm going to say y is equal to negative 4 over 3 plus 18 over 3. And that's going to give me 14 over 3. So I just found my intersection. My intersection now is, let's go back up here, x is a negative 4 over 3, and my y is going to be 14 over 3. Now does that make sense? Let's see. 14 over 3 is a little bit over, what, four, between 4 and 5, right? So here's my 5. If this is the y-axis, that's my 5. Here's my y, and that's 4. That's going to be somewhere actually in between the 4 and the 5, and sure enough, it is. Long explanation. I hope that was helpful.